I will always thank God. I will never stop praising God. I will praise God for what God has done. May we listen and be glad. Proclaim with me the Lord's greatness. Let us praise God's name together. God is good. Happier are those who find safety with God. We will now sing our opening hymn, More Love to Thee. More love to Thee, O Christ, more love to Thee. Hear Thou the prayer I make on bended knee. This is my earnest plea, more love, O Christ, to Thee, more love to Thee, more love to Thee. Please listen to our gathering prayer. Gracious God, as we prepare to worship today, we ask that you will stretch our imaginations so that we will live lives that are faithful to the good news we proclaim. We pray that you will give us confidence in our prayer, praying and hope for the future. Amen. Welcome to this online service where no matter who you are or where you are on life's journey, you are welcome to worship. And may the peace of Christ be with you. And also with you. Our scripture reading this morning is from Matthew. It's chapter 23, verses 1 through 12. Then Jesus said to the crowds and to his disciples, The scribes and the Pharisees sit on Moses' seat. Therefore, do whatever they teach you and follow it. But do not do as they do, for they do not practice what they teach. They tie up heavy burdens hard to bear and lay them on the shoulders of others but they themselves are unwilling to lift a finger to move them. They do all their deeds to be seen by others, for they make their phylacteries broad and their finger fringes long. They love to have the place of honor at banquets and the best seats in the synagogues and to be greeted with respect in the marketplaces and to have people call them rabbi. But you are not to be called rabbi. For you have one teacher, and you are all students. And call no one your father on earth, for you have one father, the one in heaven. Nor are you to be called instructors, for you have one instructor, the Messiah. The greatest among you will be your servant. All who exalt themselves will be humble, and all who humble themselves will be exalted. Here ends the reading. The other day I went looking for a hypocrite. Now I had been reading about them in the 23rd chapter of Matthew, so I thought I'd go to my favorite store to find one. Now I'm sure all of us have a favorite store. I have a, I actually have a young friend whose favorite store is any toy store. All of the displays of toys are so fascinating that my young friend can spend an entire afternoon in that store and never notice it. An afternoon in the elementary classroom is something else. They tires them out within an hour. Well, no, I, I too have a favorite store. Now, you might, you might know what it is. It's the great modern version of the general store of yesteryear. It's a great invention. It's what is known as the supermarket. Now, the, super, the supermarket allows us to do everything from banking to dining to getting haircuts and actually shopping for food. Well, I figured that surely I could find a hypocrite there. I mean, they've got just about everything a person would need. But before that quest could get underway, I had to inspect one of my favorite food displays, the ice cream section. And there I saw some brands that looked so good. And I saw one of my favorites, mint chocolate chip. I could see those tantalizing chocolate chips staring at me through the little uh, cellophane or uh, the window on the package. And 
by the way, the ice cream was actually on sale. So I bought it, brought it home, savoring the idea of the delicious chocolate chip and every bite of the mint flavored ice cream. Never mind that I had just started my diet. After all, what harm could a little bit of ice cream do once in a while? And I figured a dash of this dessert uh, occasionally would be acceptable while on my diet. Well, when I purchased the ice cream, I went to check out, I went to the checkout uh, section there to the register and I saw a young man. He had a wonderful smile on his face and he was talking to the person, uh, the customer just in front of me. And with his smile and nice voice, this handsome fellow said, good morning, is everything uh, okay for you today? And the customer said yes, and the smiling young man checked the customer on through. And I heard a voice from a, sh a machine give the price of each item. And then when the money was paid, it gave the difference and said, thank you. And then the smiling young man said, have a nice day. And I thought, you know, how nice that even the machines are pleasant. Well, and I thought this young man is taking a real interest in, in his customers. Well, it finally got to be my turn, and I came up with my one uh, pint-sized carton of mint chocolate chip ice cream. Well, the young man, still smiling, said, uh, uh, good morning, is, is, is this everything for you today? It sounded familiar, and he asked if I had a customer account with this particular store chain, and I smiled back, and, and uh, I said, yes, and uh, he actually saw my name when he entered it into the code, and uh, he said, Are you Bruce? And I smiled back and said, Yes, John, for I had seen his name on his name tag. Well, I thought that would kind of be a, you know, a welcome touch, but I guess he had kind of forgotten about his name tag. And uh, saying his name seemed to get him a little off track. Well, the talking machine said thank you, but John forgot to say have a nice day. He might have wanted to remain somewhat anonymous. Well, so there I was, still looking for a hypocrite, but I had to get home before the ice cream melted, and it was close to lunchtime anyway, and I had my diet food all ready to eat. So I arrived home, ate the diet food that they made look, you know, they make it look so good on TV. You know, why is it that it never looks that good when we prepare it? Well, I actually saw a show that explained it. How they, for example, in pre, uh, presenting a picture of cereal, they can't use uh, real uh, milk or cream, so they use glue instead. And I decided my seeking a hypocrite would have to wait. Well, my diet food was okay, and I knew that just a bit of ice cream wouldn't be too bad for the calorie count. So I had just a, I had just a small uh, dish of it, but I still needed to find a hypocrite and my day was about to come to an end. Well, after consuming uh, a little bit of ice cream, I switched on the TV for a moment and, and I happened to see a TV evangelist explaining how he needed a private jet and two other homes to go along with the two he already had. He, he was looking for home, uh, two more homes in different parts of the country to help him get away from the pressures of his work for the Lord. I mean, Jesus would retreat to the hills to pray every once in a while, so I could understand this evangelist need to have a place for meditation. And then with tears in his eyes, he requested money because without it, the broadcast that he was doing would not last another week. And I thought how fine that was that he would be so caring, but I still hadn't found my hypocrite. So I went back to the 23rd chapter of Matthew that Cynthia just read and to see if there was something there that I had missed in my search for a hypocrite. Maybe I'd just introduce myself and uh, meet that person firsthand if I ever did meet one. I mean, Jesus must have had an easy time of it. He mentions hypocrites seven times in that chapter. Uh, the study of God's word is always an inspiration and an education. But the first thing I did was discover that the phylactery was a small box containing portions of the Old Testament, you know, sort of like carrying your Bible with you. Well, they would slap their phylacteries to their left arm and their forehead. 
It was a reminder of the power of God's law. When they would wear it in public, it was a sign to everyone of their religious piety and their zeal for the law of God. To broaden the phylactery was to make the box larger and more obvious to others. Now the wearer of the large box was rewarded by the approval of the people. Well, it was a lot easier to spot a hypocrite in Jesus' day. I wondered if there really was such a being today. Well, the, I read a little bit more about the phylactery box, and it's related, to, the word phylactery is related to the Greek verb, meaning to guard or to protect. It was uh, kind of like salt that preserved food. It was like a good luck charm that would keep, you know, evil spirits away. And Egyptians, Egyptian kings would attach a good luck charm to their crowns whenever the moon was passing through certain signs of the zodiac. They did not have crosses to wear around their neck. That would come much later. I remembered the grain of mustard seed that someone had given me to be worn around my neck. Now that was all very interesting, but it did not help me on my quest to find a hypocrite. But then I hadn't come to grips with God's words, so I looked at the text again. And it was then I discovered something I had overlooked at first. I made some discoveries about hypocrisy. First of all, I discovered that hypocrisy occurs because a person wants to be good. Shakespeare put it, the false face must hide what the false heart must know. The hypocrite does not practice what he or she preaches, but at least they know enough to preach what is right. The hypocrite is aware of right and wrong, otherwise he or she wouldn't try to cover up his or her misdeeds. Secondly, I discovered that the mind is so agile and full of imagination that it can rationalize wrong and make it look like the right. The law of Korban, followed by uh, the Pharisees, is another. Korban was one law used in order to circumvent one of the Ten Commandments. Thirdly, I discovered that hypocrisy is subtle and insidious, and you can't cover it with the mask of trying to appear more religious and pious. All that does is add to the problem. Jesus told his disciples to pay attention to these hypocrites, to observe and do whatever they would tell them to do. So he was actually telling them to take orders from hypocrites. Now, I think that if I had found a hypocrite that day, I would have laid down the law to them instead of letting them lay down the law to me. Not so for Jesus. These religious proclaimers of the law were to be listened to, but the disciples were not to do what the hypocrites do. In other words, Jesus said, listen to what they preach, but don't pay attention to what they practice. Well, after looking for a hypocrite that day, relaxing at home with some delicious mint chocolate chip ice cream and watching that TV evangelist, I, I went to get ready for bed. And so I went to uh, brush my teeth. And as I was brushing my teeth, I happened to look in the mirror. And that is when I found my hypocrite. After admitting it to myself, I recall Jesus' words, which made me feel a little bit better. You know, through the years, I have been called a hypocrite by a few of my church friends, you know, just once in a while. And I, I wish I could have reminded them of what Jesus said. Follow my preaching, but not my practice. My friends, we are invited to imitate the best. It is a fidelity to imitation. Be sure to faithfully follow that, that imitation. You know, no one is 100% congruent. No one practices what he or she preaches 100% of the time. That's why we trust in God's faithfulness and not ours. That's why we preach forgiveness and reconciliation and love and justice. We may not always practice those things, but we do always preach them. Well, I've decided not to look for a hypocrite any longer because I think one only has to look 
in the mirror. So instead, I think what I'll do is work with the hypocrite I know best and see if I can't let Christ within my mind and heart increase so that it is no longer I who live, but Christ who lives in me. Amen, and may God bless us all. And now I would like for you to think of any needs or joys or concerns that you might have. So let us observe a moment of silent prayer and reflection. Eternal God, giver of all good, fountain of all mercies, in whom are the eternal springs of our life, we worship you. Your faithfulness is from one generation to another. Your mercies are new every morning, fresh every moment, and more than we can number, even when we feel as though there are none. So all glory, praise, and love to you for your unfailing goodness. And to you we bring the gratitude of our hearts for our spiritual blessings. And we ask that you would hear our prayers of thanksgiving. So thank you, God, for all interior resources of power by which our spirits, even if the world is in upheaval, can bravely live. Thank you, God, for the inward shepherding which can lead us to green pastures and beside still waters, restoring the soul. And thank you, God, for our covenanting with you. In your sanctuary on this day, we are thankful for that gift of covenant, um, which draws us together, not as separate persons with no care for our brother or sister in Christ, but as brothers and sisters in Christ creating this family of faith. And in our own sanctuaries where we gather, thank you for enabling us to be faithful to that imitation of the community we should be. And this morning, this morning, oh God, we pray that uh, for our country, we've just gone through a national election for uh, president and vice president. You know, oh God, that uh, many millions are rejoicing and celebrating but millions of others are not. So, O oh God, we pray that uh, you know that you've bound us together in a common life. So we ask you to help us in the midst of our struggles for justice and truth to face one another without hatred or bitterness and to work together with mutual patience and respect. O oh God, we thank you for those also who work voluntarily and diligently to help create order out of chaos, to bring peace, to bring love where there is hatred, and to bring good news of Christ where there is only the darkness of midnight in souls longing for rest in you. And we thank you that your friendship does not fail and that when we seem to be most alone, you feel the solitude with your presence our unseen companion, the invisible friend of our pilgrimage, making us strong in you. We pray, O oh God, in the Holy Spirit, by whose power we are able to pray aright and in the name of the one who taught us when praying to say, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our debts as we forgive our debtors. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory forever. Amen. And now we will sing our closing hymn, This is My Father's World. This is my Father's world, and to my listening ears, all nature sings and round me rings the music of the spheres. This is my Father's world, I rest me in the 
of rocks and trees, of skies and seas, his hand the wonders wrought. And now may God be gracious to us and bless us and make his face to shine upon us that God's way may be known upon the earth and God's saving power among all the nations. Amen. Amen.